The focus this morning is Origins Original. What do you think about that? That's just weird, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know who Origin was? Nope. He was a philosopher, a Greek philosopher, a great author, and he tried to make sense out of this thing we call God. People asked him, how can I know God? Is there anybody that can teach me? So he wrote a treatise or a thesis on knowing God. One of the first works where someone actually sat down and tried to make sense out of the whole God thing, the whole Jesus thing, the whole you know, incarnation thing. And in it, he uses an example. If I were to show you God, there's a problem. In his problem, he says, God is like a giant statue. If, you, if I could show you God, his statue is so large, his foot would be on California. He said places over there in Greece, but I'm going to Americanize it. God's statue, his foot would be cover California, and his other foot would cover Florida. And the statue would go as high as 227 miles into the sky, and you would be down there on the earth trying to look and behold that whole statue. You just can't do it, can you? You couldn't see it. You could never. There's just not enough of you to be able to see all of God. Paul said it different. He said, I pray for each of you that someday we can behold the entire height, width, breadth, and depth of God, if that's even possible. So Origen, in his treatise, used this theme, and he says, for, for us to try and see God is like for us to try and see this giant statue that stands over us. He said one foot in Spain, the other foot in Jerusalem, and it went 227 miles into the sky. How can you possibly behold a statue like that? You can't. So in order that we might see God in His entirety, at least as far as our minds can understand, He sent Jesus the Christ. The Christ is a little miniature statue of that giant statue that stands forever vigilant over us. Our God that neither slumbers nor sleeps. Jesus is a little personal statue of the same God which stands over us. And it's just what Jesus said at the very end of his ministry, just before he was arrested and crucified. Philip said to Jesus, show us the Father and it'll be enough. And Jesus at the Last Supper looked at Philip and said, Oh, Philip, I have been with you all these years. How can you say, show us the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the scripture of Isaiah. A thousand years before Christ, Isaiah said, There shall come a voice crying in the wilderness. And he will, cry, he will cry out to you, make straight the ways of God. Bring the obscuring hills low and the crooked streets, make them straight. The ravines, fill them in. Let nothing disturb your sight of this coming of God's salvation. And the crooked shall become straight and the rough roads made smooth and every mountain and hill brought low and every ravine filled up. And then the last most important verse and all flesh shall see clearly the salvation of God. If you interpret that verse as it really is written, all flesh shall see clearly God himself. That's what Isaiah prophesied a thousand years before Messiah was born in Bethlehem. We're going to talk about that this morning. First, I want you to stand up one more time. <laughs> 